Well, good day, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. We are coming to you from Pompano Beach, Florida, and today we're going to go visit the grave of the great Esther Roll, who was a very famous film actress, especially in television. I knew her mainly as playing, ironically, Florida Evans on Good Times. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all. It begins right now. And if you look right here, they actually named uh road after Esther. I've actually been out here before. And this is Westview Cemetery, but don't take the address that they have on Google Maps. Look and look and look. The one you want is on 22nd. We're turning in. What I read online was that this cemetery was established in 1952 because in Florida at the time it was segregated burial, so this was a black only cemetery. So one of the best ways you can find her is if you locate one of these bushes with the red in there, she has one of the only I think there's only two headstones like this in the whole cemetery. She's here with her family members. This is Esther Roll's final resting place right here. And it even says on her headstone, Esther Roll in loving memory. Good times, Florida. She was raised in Alabama, Florida. It's kind of ironic that her, the name she would most be known for in television history was Florida Evans. November 8th, 1920, November 17th, 1998. Esther was the 10th child of 18 her family lived on a big 10 acre farm and her father apparently was quite a character he had a real gift for storytelling was real amusing and many of his kids ended up taking that and wanting to become entertainers because of it in fact esther and two of her sisters became well-known entertainers one of her sisters was actually in to kill a mockingbird esther's father was very supportive of his kids the one thing that he requested of Esther was that she never ever become a maid or a servant. And um, it's kind of ironic that she, she never did, but she would get her biggest acting roles playing those parts. See, when Esther graduated high school, she went and joined some of her sisters in New York. And she was actually a very good dancer and had joined a dance group. She went to Yale University for a little while and then for about 12 years made her living solely as a dancer until she ended up falling in love with a man got married and he owned a kind of a laundry mat pressing business pressing shirt business and so she decided to become a housewife for a little while but in that five years that she was married and being a homemaker she ended up gaining weight and that ended up helping her she ended up joining the actor's studio for a while studying and so because she was heavier she was actually able to get better parts more parts during that time black women were really more cast as maids and things like that and they were always seen as being heavy so this unfortunately for her kind of played up and helped her career she set her sights on being a great actress and worked her way through being in small plays in new york to ending up on broadway doing things as big as a raisin in the sun. It was during this time that she was actually discovered by Norman Lear. Norman Lear was kind of known for this. He, that's the same way he discovered Sherman Hemsley, who eventually became, you know, George Jefferson. They saw Esther Roll in a performance on Broadway and they decided to cast her as the housekeeper for a new show called Maud starring B. Arthur and the concept of Maud, of course, was this very liberal family and she was very different. Her character was very different. So it was a 
big comedic draw to the series so much so that Norman Lear saw an opportunity and decided to give her her own spinoff, which would be the show that we knew her for most, probably Good Times. However, she had a stipulation for doing Good Times. And if they didn't meet her stipulation, she said she absolutely refused to do it. That stipulation was that during that time, most of the shows that were involving black families were all broken black families. And this show was gonna be no exception. They were gonna have it as a broken black family. And she said, I grew up with a mother and a father. I wanna see this show depict a strong black family. Even if they're in the ghetto, I wanna show a strong husband, a strong father, raising his family as a part of the household. And so that's why they ended up going out and getting John Amos. And one of the things that Esther Roll and John Amos both did not like about the show was that it didn't take very long before the show basically became what they called a clown show. You see, from what I understand from my friends at the comedy store, Mitzi Shore told everybody that when she started this store and it wasn't going very well, the comedy store, the first act that ended up getting picked up out of the comedy store that gave them any recognition was Jimmy Walker. And Jimmy Walker got discovered, got put on The Tonight Show, and then they put him on Good Times. And he became the serious, well, I don't want to say serious, but I mean the major comedy relief. And he wasn't serious at all, any of the time. So this became a real problem for John Amos and Esther Roll both. They hated this. They thought, like I said, they thought it was just a clown show. And no matter how much they complained saying, come on, give this show a chance to show a real black family without all the goofiness and all the stupidity. And they just, they really could never get that. So John Amos decided to leave the show. And right after that, Esther Roll ended up leaving the show. But I'll never forget the episode where John Amos left and they showed Flo, Florida, dealing with it. I was a big fan of Good Times. I watched it on TBS through all the reruns, and I remember being so shocked when I saw that episode, and you see Florida sitting in the kitchen, and you just see her go, damn, damn, damn. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> a heartbreaking episode. Now, what's kind of cool is that you know, unfortunately, Esther never had her own children. She did have stepchildren, but she never had her own. And she ended up taking Bernadette, who played Thelma Evans, under her wing. Apparently, they lived like right around the corner from each other, and Bernadette would tell great stories. In fact, saying that Esther helped her grow up. Bernadette said when she was cast, she had been prepared. She had been to Juilliard and everything, but that the show just would never give her anything other than being in the bathroom yelling at JJ or, or complaining. They gave her no depth to her character. And so she basically was starting to get bored. She felt like because she had went to Juilliard that she deserved a better shot or give her something. So since her and Esther were so close, she told Esther, I just, I feel like I want more lines. And Esther said, okay, I'll take care of it. So the next time they did a script read through, Esther stopped and said, hey, I wanna ask you guys a question. She said this to the writers, to the producers and said, does my daughter on this show mean anything? They're like, yeah, of course. She goes, is she an idiot? Is she stupid? I mean, is there something wrong with her that she can't talk? They said, no. She said, well, then give her some lines. This is ridiculous. It shouldn't just be my sons that have lines. I want my daughter to have a personality too, so give her some lines. Bernadette also said that Esther Roll was nice enough because they lived right around the corner from each other to give her rides to work. And she said she had a real bad habit of always being two or three minutes, five minutes late because she was getting ready. And Esther finally had enough one day and said, hey, you need to take this more seriously. If you're late again, I'm leaving you. And Bernadette said, I thought she was joking. But she said, just in case she wasn't, the very next day, I was doing everything I could to get ready and I came out to catch my ride and I was three minutes late and she was gone. And I didn't get to work until like one o'clock because she said there were no buses, there were no taxis or anything you can call. And she said, when I got there, I walked in, looked at Esther and Esther just kind of looked at me and said, uh-huh, you'll be ready tomorrow, won't you? She said, that was a big lesson for me because before that I kind of got to do whatever I want. She taught me that, you know, that you have a responsibility to everyone that's working on that show to be there and be ready to work when they're ready to work so that you can get the job done. 
And Brennan had also said they were friends throughout her entire life. Um, you know, towards the end of Esther's life, she had really bad diabetes and had to go to the doctor every week for dialysis and Bernadette would bring her to the doctor every Tuesday. She said when Esther ended up passing away, all the, the actors from the show, the whole family got back together and they had a funeral for her in Los Angeles and then she was brought here to be buried with her family members. Another thing that I loved Esther in that I remember because it was on HBO just constantly was she was on or in the movie Driving Miss Daisy and again she played a maid servant kind of character but really tough scene when she's in there I think she's snapping green beans or something and you just see her basket of everything fall on the ground you realize that she's died her entire life she was involved in human rights civil rights making sure that uh that black african-american women were seen as equals and she made a record and she would tour with maya angelou and they would go do poetry together and think i mean it's just amazing the kind of career she had so she did make good like i said she made a promise to her father she would never be a servant or a maid but she made a heck of a lot of money being an actress portraying them and she said that she never had a problem playing those parts um, especially in like Driving Miss Daisy because it was a kind of a period piece it was a it was meant to show a certain time in a certain part of the country and that was you know she took it as a as a real acting role and of course I remember in the 90s when she was doing all those ads for the psychic hotline <laughs> tell him Esther sent you I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Esther Roll you may have seen her on Maude. You may have seen her on tons of shows. Hey, you may have even seen her on Broadway and didn't even know it back in the day. Here she rests in Pompano Beach with her family. Rest in peace, Florida Evans. Thank you everyone for watching. Have a great night and goodbye.